Hi, this is Dr. Eric Dine with Room Now, checking in from Baltimore, Maryland, on the final day of ACR Convergence. Uh, we've seen a lot of great reports over the uh, whole uh, conference that we've had so far. One question I think uh, that was answered by a poster out of University of Miami, Miami is, uh, what to do with the patients with fatigue in rheumatoid arthritis? And, which patients do we expect to have benefits, to have improvement when they come in complaining of fatigue in RA? So this study looked at 111 patients with rheumatoid arthritis and 52 of them repeat, reported high fatigue scores uh, at 12 months with diagnosis. So um, what, what were the factors that led to improvement in fatigue over time? Uh, in the univariate analysis, they found several predictors for improved fatigue. So female sex, non-smokers, and increased baseline fatigue appeared to um, improve better with treatment of RA. Um, depression showed a trend toward significance, uh, but did not meet it in the univariate analysis. It's worth noting, this is just patients uh, being seen with usual care of RA. There was no specific intervention that was trialed. Um, for uh, improvement of their fatigue, no, um, uh, no interventions of any sort other than routine RA care. When we get to the multivariate analysis, they find um, really two odds ratios stand out quite dramatically. The first being non-smokers were much, much likelier to improve with um, their fatigue. So the odd ratio was 7.6, that they're much more likely to get better fatigue as compared to the patients that were smokers. Depression, on the other hand, opposite um, signal in the multivariate analysis that their odds ratio is 0.17. So much more unlikely to have improvement of their fatigue. So if a patient's a smoker and depressed, you're likely to see them continue to be fatigued. Um, whereas if they're a non-smoker and, and they do not have mood difficulties, that's not a concern, um, uh, or they're much likely to do better. Um, exercise was, was subjectively measured through, through the activity questionnaires. It was something I would have liked to see some more uh, objective measures of, of exercise, because I would have expected to see uh, that play a role in fatigue in our patients. Uh, they asked about physical function, uh, but not specifically about quantifying exercise and, and breaking it down by that. Um, but I do think there are some very important notes for here that um, first, the impact of smoking. Smoking itself um, causes fatigue, uh, and that's something that's really important to adjust and modify for so many reasons in RA, but this is another thing that you can counsel your patient on um, to do better um, and to feel better. And um, thinking about mood disorders and if, if patients are fatigued, um, if it's related to the active um, RA inflammatory process, or if there's uh, an underlying mood disorder that can also be addressed. So I think this is exciting because it's a common problem. It's something that comes up, uh, again, 52 out of 111 patients in this study. So almost half of your patients will complain of fatigue uh, and both smoking and, um, and mood symptoms are modifiable if you can get them into uh, the right treatment options for, for both of those. Uh, so I think this is definitely something that could be translated into clinical practice. For Eric Dine, this is Room Now. Uh, this is the final day of ACR Convergence, and uh, we've enjoyed looking at all the abstracts and uh, presentations throughout the, through the meeting. Take care.